Hello everyone and welcome back to Funk with JavaScript. I am Aki, your host, and in this video we will see how to go about setting a small React project, all the component structure, folders, etc. We will be creating a small timeline component with the help of style components and storybook and then see what all benefits these two framework brings to front-end stack development. So without much ado, let's get started. This is the final outcome which we desire to achieve. It's a timeline, as you can see. Uh, we can specify multiple points in the timeline, some description and the dates, and it should render it horizontal like this. It's responsive. Uh, of course, in a small device, for example, iPhone, it should not be horizontal, it should be vertical, and that can also be easily achieved with the help of styled components. We will see how to use them. Uh, the description, um, the code for this project is already in GitHub. The link is in the description. Also, I have already created a small React app for myself because it takes a lot of time to do it already. Uh, if you don't know how to create a React app, the link again is in the description. It's another video which I did. So let's see how it, what all do I have. That's our project. Let's keep it on a different screen. What I would like to do is to, let's go to app.js, clean this code a bit. Uh, let's put it test for now. Save it. Okay, I don't need, since I'm using style components, I don't need the CSS files associated with it. Let's go ahead, remove these ones. Let's keep the project a bit clean. I don't need this also, neither this, this, or this. Okay, okay, and then I also need to clean this up in my Code. Let's go ahead, remove this, see that uh, I'm using logo somewhere over here. And also output spaces. So now it should be fine. Oops, I'm still using index somewhere. It's over here. Ahead, remove it. Fine, perfect. So we have our application up and running. If we have a look at our project, uh, a very good tip I learned reading um, uh, when I was learning React or slash front end development is to look at your UI and think of boxes. Boxes is what we need to create. So for example, if I look at this thing, I am immediately thinking of a big box, which is my component, which starts from the left and encapsulates everything. Then I have individual boxes, uh, a box which contains lorem ipsum, this text, as well as the date section. And then within that big sec date, within that section, I have individual boxes, one box for lorem ipsum text, another box for 24 December text, you see? So I have, I'm dividing the whole UI into small boxes. And of course, one box is my line component over here. So the way we would approach any project in front-end development is to start from the smallest box and then keep on building them. So for example, for this project, what it means, I would first create the smallest and easiest box, which is my line component. Then I would create the date, then probably the lorem ipsum dollar, you know, the description text, then add all of them into a bigger component, single component, which encapsulates the text as well as date. Let's call it box and then add it to the line component. So it's, it's a conglomeration of all these components which will render our project. Right. I hope this point is a bit clear. If no, uh, let me know and I would like to uh, go a bit more in detail into it. But this is something which really helped me to understand how to go about creating projects. So the first command I'm going to 
run is to install our site styled components. So let's go ahead. It should be BMI styled components. Did I type it correct? Yes. Style components is installed. Let's do a quick check if everything went okay. And I can see my styled component is there. Let's go ahead and install Storybook which is not NPM. I was making this mistake a lot. It's SNPX SP in it. The reason behind it not being NPM standard command is because it needs to change the configuration also. It's not only a matter of installing something under in node.modules. We shall see it in a minute. So let's go ahead, run it. So Storybook is also installed. Let's quickly check what changes it did to our solution. The first thing is it installed a new folder with some files. This is basically a configurational file for Storybook. Let's quickly check out if everything is okay over there. Uh, stories, yes. Don't worry, we don't have to really know about each and each one of them, what they do. Um, of course, it's always good. Uh, but still, we can skip it for the time being. And for the preview also, everything looks good. Okay, uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is do it does is to change, to add some commands, which is Storybook, as you can see. So what we can do now is rather than saying npm start to test our component, we can do npm run Storybook. But before we do that, let's go ahead, write some code. Uh, Let's go ahead, create a new folder, which is components. And within these, we will be creating all the, all the dates, the lines, and the text box, which we just saw. So the first one and the most easiest one I'm going to do is to do the line. Let's say line.jsx. Um, what did I do? It should be a dot, I think. Yes, uh, now I can say RFC and I get the code. If you do not uh, get this piece of code by typing RFC, that is because you don't have an extension, which is E79 or something like that. Let me check. If not, please go ahead and install, uh, install this extension. It will save you so much work. It's this one, ES790 text to the graph. Let's go ahead and for the timing, I would just say line component, save it. Um, how to test it out, right? The easiest way you could think of is to say, okay, let's go ahead to app.js, load it from here and render it in my return function, right? One way to do it, but if you have multiple components and also one component and you would like to test it with different inputs, then it becomes a bit different. And that's where Storybook actually shines. It gives you an ability to test your component without even loading them in your app.js or any other JavaScript file, right? So to do that, to use that, what I need to do is to follow a convention of Storybook, which is to say component.stories.jsx. Uh, dot stories is a signal to storybook to say hey go ahead and load this file and within this file we'll specify loading our component so let me go ahead and copy paste some line of code for my storybook component if i copy it let's see paste it here what am i what am i doing react nothing nothing new over here standard module implement this is uh, default every story needs to have a default i uh, know over here i'm telling my uh, storybook to say hey pick some uh, show me uh, the line component which i have just written and these are the arguments which i would like to specify but in our case we can remove it for the time being because we don't have any argument. If I save it now and I say npm run storybook, I should be able to see my line component. Let's go ahead. Now, as you can see, 
uh, the page loads if I go to line first story and that's coming from our line component right um, the first story thingy is coming from is coming from here because that's the variable which we discussed which we wrote and I know it's a bit weird how, the way storybook breaks the variable for it for the name but uh, I hope they had some good reason on to why they did so. So let's go ahead and quickly change our line component because after all, we need to write some code over here, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is to import styled from, this is another uh, library which we had installed, which was styled components. Um, let's see the magic for this from I would like to import it from styled components slash macro. Now what I can do, I can define a constant here with all the CSS properties which I would like to have for this line component. So in our case, let me go ahead and simply copy paste it because what's the point of writing the CSS? Let's forget about this for the time being. Line CSS, voila, voila, voila. And now I can say, render my line CSS variable like this. And if I save it now, and if I open, if I could show you my style components, woohoo, there is nothing appearing as of now. Um, Okay, let's see, uh, let's try to debug it. Why is there no line, line CSS? My mistake. Uh, it, it is because the line is, I think, white, gay. What a stupid. So let's let's put something over there. Uh, let's put it background. Should be. Uh, let's give it a color. It should be this. Voila. If I save it now. If I save it now and I change the color, you can see the line is appearing over there. Cool. Now, uh, what else I could do? Uh, what I would like to do, another thing is to not hard code my color over here. Uh, for that, what I can do, I would like to take this value from line itself. Uh, so let's color it. Uh, color is, and then put in a default value. Of this one, right? So that input component can call my my component of line with different values for the color, and I would render it differently. Uh, look at the magic which is going to happen. Now I can say color is my variable color, and over here I can programmatically change my CSS property. That's the syntax, so you put in a, I can never figure out where, uh, oops, where my, yeah, so it's like this. It takes it an input value. Uh, it's a function, yes, I put in color variable, and then I say, right, and now in this way, my, my color is not hard coded into the component itself. Uh, as you can see, nothing much will change because I have put in the default value over here. But what I can do in style component in storybook, sorry, is to give an ability to end user to, to me as a developer or to some other tester to, to change the components color without 
loading the loading it in some kind of a page okay. to do that what i can do is to say let's go here and then i say i have a component right and it expect it expects a variable of the type color and default it to hash d9 d9 whatever it is now let's go ahead copy it over here now if i save it and let me show you the screen i have the line component rendered over there i have another thing called a control and over here i can change the value of my input color variable right how cool is that i can do it with strings if if my component is taking a string i can do it with color of course date numbers and so on and so forth and that is the benefit of using style comp uh, of storybook sorry i always confuse between style component and storybook it's too confusing storybook um imagine imagine if you are the if you, if you are working in a big corporate house and they have their own guideline multiple projects are happening you would have to create buttons date 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 components headers footers and so on and so forth and it's of course it's not every project is not going to create their own button because in a company button in a, if, if you have any kind of a corporate guidelines a button should look like the button your company wants it to be so you will probably write it once put it somewhere in a central repo and then let other projects use it and and what you can do with storybook is to load your storybook on those components individually and test them out without actually putting them in a project so that's where storybook is a help so let's go ahead we have our line component ready what else do i want 